So this video has been brewing for a little while then, but I think it's finally time that we speak about the decline of the F1 games under EA. This video has actually been triggered by Arav making quite a similar video, sort of criticizing what he sees is wrong with, with this year's game and the sort of decline of the games. And I should say as well, this channel is normally scripted videos, but I feel like this is better as just more of an off the cuff experience of my many, many hours playing not only this game, but the past, I mean, every game that Codemasters has ever played. I've got hundreds of hours on every single game. So I'm talking about the decline of F1 under EA. I, I don't think that's necessarily directly a result. I know a lot of people think that EA is a result of the decline of the F1 games, um, but they bought Codemasters in the beginning of 2021. And I think most people consider that F1 2020 slash 2021 was probably the sort of peak of F1 games and they've declined ever since. And look, I'm not making that up. That is an undeniable fact. F1 22 did very well off the back of 2021 in terms of sales, but 23 and 24 have both declined significantly year on year in terms of player base, in terms of sales, in terms of reviews as well. F1 22 was worse than 21, 23, they just keep declining. It, it's, it's a verifiable fact that the games are getting worse since F1 22 onwards. And uh, really for me, I think the big reason, I mean, Arav gave a couple of specific reasons. For me, I just think it's just a general lack of attention to detail. Where is the razor sharp focus on really any subject? All they seem to do every year is bring big new features that they can, what used to be called, put on the back of the game box. Um, you know, so they can sell it and be like, oh, hey guys, we've got this huge new feature, we've got this huge new feature, and they keep adding new features, and these keep, just features keep flopping. You know, we had F1 World last year that is, can only be described as a flop, to be honest. You know, we had the um, F1 Life thing a couple of years ago, like all these big new features they introduced just tend to go badly. People still just keep playing career mode and online. And okay, this year, career mode's had a decent step forward, but again, there's a lack of attention to detail there. I've just got off the back of doing a first season of a driver career as Michael Schumacher, and I really enjoyed it, and I dominated my teammate. I massively outperformed the car. I got second in, in the standings, really happy. And at the end of the season, it's like, oh, who do you want to sign for? RB, Alpine, Williams? What do you mean? I'm Michael Schumacher. I don't know that's a really specific thing, but I wanted to sign for Ferrari or Mercedes or Red Bull. Like, where's the interest there? And it's just like things like that. And it's really small stuff, I think, that adds up to make the game just less enjoyable now, I think. Um, you know, I, I personally do still enjoy playing F124, but I definitely enjoy it less than I used to, the F1 series. There's no doubt about that. This year in particular, I quite enjoyed last year's game. I think last year for me was sort of the peak of the handling, and I'm a big handling guy. So I quite enjoyed last year's game, but this year... The handling, yeah, I mean, we've got to talk about it a bit. It's definitely, I mean, look, some people like it compared to last year. Some people dislike it compared to last year. It's clear it is divisive. And if you're trying to make a good game that sells a lot of copies, don't be divisive. I mean, that's, you know, 101. And again, lack of attention to detail. They made all these changes to the handling, which, by the way, I fed back to the start of this year and said, I mean... I was pretty brutal in, in my feedback, my private feedback to them. Uh, and, and I basically said to revert to last year and tweak from there because this handling is a disaster. And uh, I, I even warned them that the sales would be bad with the handling model, it, it is what it is. And, and most people's criticism this year's game is the handling. Um, and it's just been so divisive and, and loads of people really don't enjoy the handling this year. They had to change it only a week or two after launch. They massively over, you know, not massively, but they 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 dumbed down the handling effectively quite a bit after launch. They sort of rode back a little bit. And again, lack of attention to detail. The AI haven't really been updated this year. This year, the AI, in my opinion, has gotten worse for the first time year on year in, in as long as I've been playing the F1 games. Normally, the AI makes small steps every year. They get better, better, better. And actually, the AI normally are very, very good in the F1 games. It's some of the best AI that there is in racing games, in my opinion. Um, but this year, definitely not. I mean, again, lack of attention to detail. They changed the handling massively. Did they change the AI massively to deal with that? No. They launched with a game that had massive DRS trains and issues with just not being fun anymore, just not being fun to race. They massively changed the tires, which means the hard tires are too OP and the soft tires are too useless. 
So that's killed that lack of attention to detail because they didn't they didn't look you know what the rate what the result of the actual racing is going to be to the changes they're making. They didn't adapt the AI to that. They massively changed the ERS systems, which definitely has made the racing worse. The new ERS system makes the racing worse. It's a racing game. It's supposed to be fun to race on, and the ERS changes made the racing worse. Again, another thing that I fed back to them in private of, of changes they should make to the ERS system. And again, attention to detail. Did they adapt the AI to the new ERS system? No. They just launched with the exact same AI ERS management with a brand new ERS system. What, what are you doing? Where's the attention to detail? Make these changes, test them in the game, and go, actually, all right, maybe these, these changes are better, but actually the result's worse? Don't release a game like that. Uh, that's not a controversial or secretive or, you know what I mean, niche uh, thing to say. If you're making big changes, the rest of the game has got to match up to it. It's as simple as that. The racing is objectively worse this year because Dirty Air is based in non-existent still, same as last year, fine. DRS is still quite realistic, same as last year, fine-ish. But then if you change the ERS to make that massively easier as well, just everyone can just follow each other and just have massive DRS trains, AI as well. And again, lack of attention to detail, bugs. Um, this game is, I thought at launch actually, I felt like it was less buggy than previous games, but where the bug fixes? You know, they, they've obviously updated it and, and fixed some bugs. And I know their reaction to this will be, oh, well, you've got to report the bugs, but I report bugs all the time. Not as much anymore because what's the point? I have reported many, many bugs over many, many years and they don't listen. For example, right, attention to detail. If they played the game and paid attention to the details, they would have noticed that for the last many, many, many years in a row, in the in-garage screen for the weather, it's wrong. So basically, um, in qualifying, Q1, Q2, Q3, all has the exact same weather forecast. And that is not true, that you won't have the exact same weather Q1, Q2, Q3. So if it's raining in Q1 and has a 80% chance of rain at the start and a 60% chance of rain at the end, it will say that's the same for Q2 and Q3. That's wrong. Q2 could be bone dry. It's just wrong. And then to add to that, whatever session you're currently in, if you look at the forecast for the race, the clouds are exactly the same as whatever forecast, whatever race session you're currently in. So if I'm in a practice session and it's showing as uh, sunny, so all, all the icons are sunny. If I look at the race, it will show sunny, the exact same thing. But again, that's not realistic. The only thing that's realistic from that is, is the percentage chance of rain. So it could be a 100% chance of rain and it would have sunny icons. That has been in the game forever. Anyone who plays the game a significant amount will know all about that bug that I've just talked about. Do they even know about it? Again, their argument would be, well, you've got to report it. Play your game. Play your game. And you'd know about this. Anyone who plays the game knows about that bug. If EA don't know about that, that's not the player's reporting issue. That's an EA issue. You know, it, game launches time and time again with the same bugs. The formation of that bug came back on at the start of this game. The two-player career cars being set to equal came back at the start of this game. Both of those bugs were in at launch last year. They fixed it in a patch. It comes back for launch this year. It's frustrating because I love F1 and I love playing the F1 game. I still enjoy playing F124, but it's so frustrating seeing this decline. And honestly, the reason I'm making this video is because I'm concerned that they're going to continue this decline. They're going to continue with the lack of attention to detail and the con concentration on the headline back of the game box features that ultimately flop because they, they've not, again, lack of attention to detail. They've not given enough attention to detail to how that mode will work. A lot of times when us creators try a new game or a new mode or a new feature, whatever it is, we'll often say, oh yeah, I like it, but you know, maybe it should work this way or this way or this way. And, and I hate to break it to you, normally we're right. I'm not saying, you know, we should be the ones building the game and they should listen only to us. Of course not. That would be insane. But actually, we play the game for a living. We play the game a lot. We've got an invested interest in the game doing well. If we're suggesting changes, we're probably right. Same as if esports drivers are talking about the handling. They're probably right. Because it's their job to drive the game as quickly as possible. And as always, you need a bit of a pinch of salt with all those things. But 
you know, they will think that they listen to creators and esports drivers and the like, but they don't. They don't. They take on a very small portion of, of what we say. And I know they're, not, they're never going to take on everything of what we say. But again, attention to detail. I, I, I think every single year the game needs to change in, in every area a little bit. They constantly get, get moans and I get comments as well when I do reviews and things that people say, oh, it's just the same thing. It's copy and paste. the same thing as last year. And I've never really understood that criticism, honestly, until now. Because I've always seen, well, actually, they, they've changed this, 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 this. Because I... You know, it's my full-time job to play the game, so I notice all the, all the smaller changes they make, and I appreciate them. And it is a yearly release. You know, if you buy the game every two, three years, no one's forcing you to buy it every year. So if you buy it every two or three years, you will see some bigger changes. But this year, I, I finally agree with everyone. Online has, has not changed. Online is absolutely identical year on year. Um, I th there was one ridiculously minor change they made. I can't remember what it was, but it's the same. Look, I'm not expecting them to overhaul every game mode every year. That's not possible with a yearly release. It is a yearly release. It's not going to fundamentally change every year. But change something. Change something. Change a few bits every single year in every single game mode, in every single aspect of the game. Change the AI a little bit every year. Change the R&D tree a bit every single year. Change the options available in multiplayer every single year. Give us some new options. Give us the ability to disable DRS for a race or something. Ranked mode was a flop last year. I wrote, uh, I don't know what it was. It was like a thousand word document for them. I, I, I sent it to them in private and I then put it as a, a kind of a public letter. Um, of, all, of all my concerns with ranked, a lot of people agreed with me. Ranked is exactly the same this year. Some of the things I was talking about were bigger changes that maybe they can't make within one year. A lot of it though, smaller tweaks. Make the changes. Like for example, Last year, ranked launched without strict corner cutting. So a serious ranked mode, you could just go off track and whatever else. It wasn't, you know, it was on lax or whatever the mode's called for, call, for, for track limits. So then the only change they made, I believe, to ranked post-launch last game and even through to this year's game, because they haven't changed it, was they, they enabled strict corner cutting in ranked. So suddenly, if you go off track, you get a warning. Great, you get, you get a warning when you go off track, and that's good. But penalties don't apply. <laughs> so I could still drive off the track at every opportunity, barring I'm not doing, uh, providing I'm doing it so much that I'm getting an instant penalty, I can get loads and loads of warnings. I'll never get a penalty for it. Eventually, I might get disqualified. I'm not 100% on that. But there's no penalties like there would be in all the other game modes for some reason. Don't know why that is a thing. That's not ranked. Look, I'm not, I'm not going to go into too much detail on, on ranked because ranked is one that I'm particularly passionate about, but they've just not changed it. They've not changed it year on year. My team career mode has been unchanged for many years, and I suspect next year we'll get an overhauled my team career mode along with driver career, and probably the return of story mode, because um, that seems to come back every other year, which will be a you know a, a bigger thing. Um, but are we still going to see the same trend? Are we still going to see a lack of attention to detail? Are we still going to see the same bugs coming back for probably the fourth, fifth year in a row? Some bugs. Are we still going to see the same bugs come back that have been patched from last year's game and then they come back again at the launch of this year's game? Are we still going to see changes being made that don't, that haven't got a lack of attention to detail on, on other departments, like handling being changed that AI don't adapt to? Are we still going to see all this stuff? Is it going to get worse again next year? I'm concerned. I've got an invested interest. And I have already started to diversify because I personally don't want to play the game as much this year as I have done previously. And people aren't watching it as much and people aren't buying it as much and playing it as much. If those trends reverse, I do better. My career goes better. I have more viewers. I have more followers. I make more money. If the game does better, I do better. Me and EA have got the exact same uh, target. The game, to make the game as good as possible. Now, I don't agree with the criticism a lot of the time when people say lazy developers, and I always hated that. The developers aren't lazy. No, of course they're not. They're working full-time, doing the hours that they've been contracted to do to the best of their ability. Every single individual developer at EA is working hard on making the best game they can. They've got hundreds of people. We're not talking about a little, you know, indie game developer. They've got hundreds of people working on this game. I can't remember exactly what it was. It's definitely over 100 total. All of those people are working hard and doing the best they can. 
but they're being held back by something. They're being held back by something. The games are getting worse every year. And let's be honest, if this trend continues and the game keeps getting worse every year, again, that's objective based on reviews, based on player numbers, it's declining. There's, there will come a point where EA, EA will give up or F1 will give up. F1 will refuse to renew the license or EA will decide actually, you know, we're starting to make a loss in this game. What the hell is this? Something big, someone's got to give. I think now we're at a tipping point. Now it can be saved. Give us another year or two of declining games and it, it may be unsavable. F1 might take the license away from them. Then what do they do? Do they go unlicensed like FC? Hate to break it to you, unlicensed open wheel games don't do very well. <laughs> Not really. I enjoy playing iRacing. I think it's fantastic, but there's a lot less players that are playing open wheel on iRacing than there is playing F1, even this year's game, even though it's bad. And it's missing a lot of features because it's not official. It's missing, you know, safety cars and red flags and um, better a better weather system. I love iRacing's weather system, but it's they don't, they don't have it enough. And Anyway, I'm not going to talk about iRacing. So, yeah, let me know down in the comments what you think. I'm sure EA will see this video. I'm sure EA will drop me a message after this video goes out and uh, say, you know, we don't appreciate that video. Um, you know, they often say that, Oh, it's it de it's, de it's demotivational for the developers, and and it is. But do you know what's more demotivational for the developers? Declining reviews every year, declining sales every year, losing their job because you lost your license because you kept making worse games every year. I don't have I don't have an easy solution other than attention to detail is important in games, and listen to the people that care about your games. I'm not saying they ignore us because they don't. I was part of the F1 Design Council thing that they did, and I played the game. I first played 24 at the end of last year. They got us in to do stuff, uh, to give some feedback, and they, they listened to some extent. But when I'm giving you a stark warning about the handling, and it turns out I was right, maybe listen to me more in the future. Maybe heed my warning in the future. I know what I'm talking about, and it's not just me. There's lots and lots of people out there that know what they're talking about. I don't know. It's worrying. I can't control it other than doing this. This is all I can do. I can't make the game any better. I can't force EA to do anything. They'll obviously be concerned internally that, 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 that the, um, the sales are going down. Have they, have they made big changes to reverse it? Well, I guess we'll find out next year. Will we get less bugs next year? Will we get more things being changed next year? Will we get some real genuine improvements to core gameplay stuff that the bit that people care about? Not all will just get another new feature to try and sell the game. That judging on the last few features that have been released will be a flop. We'll see. We'll see. But anyway, guys, let me down in the comments what you think about the game and the trend of EA's F1 games. As I said, EA will see this video because I will get a message that will say we don't appreciate that video. Um, so they will read the comments. Put it down in the comments, like the ones you agree with to make sure that they go near the top, so in the top comment section. EA will see this to some extent. Um, they, you know, this isn't the only thing they'll see. Obviously, they'll see social media comments and everything else, but you never know. Maybe, maybe we can do it. And do you know what's interesting? Do you know what's interesting? Many, many, many years ago, I released a video and a poll, and that poll was, t was titled let Cody's hear our voice because I felt like we were being ignored back then. And the things that we wanted as, as, as the loyal customers and the loyal player base and the people who play the game significantly and especially people like me, content creators, show thousands of people what, how good the game can be. Back then they weren't listened to enough. So I, I, I got at the time thousands of people to respond to this uh, survey, which was really big numbers at the time because no one, no full time F1 content creator didn't exist back then. Um, and I had to do that then. And I guess this is my modern version of doing that now. EA, listen to us, not just content creators, listen to us in general. Stop the rot, please. For my own sake, and for your sake, and for all the developers' sake. Come on. We can make a better game than this. From next year, let's concentrate on the attention to detail. Let's play the game. Let's figure out 
why these things aren't working together. Let's not have these departments working in silos doing whatever the hell they want to do that doesn't speak to the other departments and it, and it fundamentally makes a worse game. Let's make a better game next year. Because they can do it. They can absolutely do it. I know people are already talking about, you know, EA, or they need to lose a license. No, absolutely not. They can do it. They're a fantastic development team. They're just being held back by something. And I don't know what that something is, but yeah. Anyway, that's it for me. And this is why I normally script videos because I waffle. <laughs> but uh, I hope you guys enjoy the video anyway. I do appreciate the support. Do drop a sub if you haven't already. I do all these kind of overview slash review content. Normally it's scripted and much more concise than this, but uh, I hope you enjoyed something a little bit different for this one. And as I said, do drop a comment down below on exactly what you think. EA will be reading them and I'll catch you next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.